Good morning everyone, it's Annie with Manor Farms Homestead. Today I'm doing a quick video talking about different methods for salting your cheese. Salt is an integral part of cheese making because it slows down the good bacteria at the proper time. It inhibits mold growth and inhibits the bad bacteria that you don't want growing in your cheese. So each type of cheese will call for a certain amount of salt and different methods for adding that to the cheese at specific times during the making process. One very common method is milling the salt into your cheese. This is typically used with stuff like cheddar, and I do have a video on cheddar cheese making, and I demonstrate that salting method in that video. So we're not actually gonna go through the milling process of salting cheese. Today we're gonna to be talking about brining cheese, which is a very common method for a lot of different cheeses. So that's going to be an integral part of your ingredient stash if you're going to be making a lot of cheese. The other method is just dry salting, and that's typically used for fresher type cheeses um, that have a higher moisture and are able to kind of draw that salt into the block of cheese. Dry salting doesn't typically work for really hard cheeses like cheddar, that's why that salt is added during the milling process in addition to that salt being added at a specific stage to stop the good bacteria from forming any more lactic acid. So today we're gonna to go ahead and start off with brining a cheese. I made a Swiss cheese yesterday and it's time for it to go into the brine at this point. So I've not made a lot of cheeses that require brines over the past year. I've really worked hard on perfecting my cheddar and mozzarella so um, I actually tossed a brine that I'd had for several years. Once you make a brine, you can actually keep it in your cheese cave or refrigerator indefinitely. So it does call for a lot of salt, but again, you'll get multiple uses out of this one brine. It's ideal if you have it in some sort of container that has a lid. In this case, I usually cover this with plastic wrap and store it in my cheese cave. Now, what I use for a cheese cave is actually a wine cooler that I can set to about 52 degrees. So that's ideal for storing your brine. So in cheese making, when your recipe calls for a saturated brine, what that's gonna entail is one gallon of non-chlorinated water, 2.25 pounds of non-iodized salt, some calcium chloride and just a tiny bit of vinegar. So we'll go through this recipe. We're gonna start off with our water. We are on well water, so I just have tap water here. If you are on city water that has chlorine, you're going to need to um, get you a gallon of distilled water to start your brine with. Okay. Now to this, we're going to need to add 2.25 pounds of salt. So I have my kitchen scale here ready to go and we're gonna go ahead and zero it out on this little container. And for the brine, the main uh, thing to keep in mind is that you just need to use non-iodized salt. So you can use a coarse sea salt because it's gonna dissolve in there. You can use a pickling canning salt. You can use a flaky kosher salt. I don't recommend that just because the flaky kosher salt that you typically use in your cheese is more expensive and it's not really necessary for creating your brine. I'm just going to use some plain sea salt. So we will need 36 ounces of this salt, which would be the 2.25 pounds. Since this is a saturated brine, there's a possibility that a little bit of your salt doesn't dissolve if you're at maximum saturation. So we're just gonna get this dumped into a gallon of water. Now to that, we're going to need to add calcium chloride. Now, if you're using liquid calcium chloride, you need a 30% solution, and you're gonna use one tablespoon. Now, I'm actually using crystallized calcium chloride. And since we want one tablespoon of a 30% solution, we're just gonna use one teaspoon of this. If you do get um, the 
solid calcium chloride, make sure you keep it airtight because it will soak up moisture very quickly. This little pouch comes with a little zipper. Then I store it in an airtight Ziploc bag. Last but not least, we need one teaspoon of vinegar in this solution. white vinegar, not apple cider or any fancy vinegars, just a plain white vinegar. Then we're going to start mixing this until we get essentially all of our salt dissolved. All right, so we have our salt dissolved into our brine at this point. If you want to speed things along and not have to mix it as long, I ended up stirring this for about eight minutes to get it completely dissolved. You can certainly use hot water and the salt will dissolve much faster. If you need to use your brine right away, um, you'll want to use cool water like I did because the brine does need to be cool before the cheese goes into it. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and get this wheel of Swiss into our brine. So here's our wheel of Swiss cheese. We're gonna go ahead and set this down into our brine. Because this is a saturated brine, whatever you put in it is gonna float. So you're gonna have this whole top part of your cheese that sits up above your brine, what you're going to want to do with that is sprinkle the top with some salt. Now this is the time you could use something like a flaky salt or um, a pickling salt, something that's a little bit finer and that would work better in this particular situation. The one thing I do want to point out with salts, you never want to use iodized salt when you're making cheese. So I'm just going to take some of my flaky cheese salt kosher salt and I'm going to sprinkle about a teaspoon and a half on the top of this cheese. The purpose of the calcium chloride in your brine is to prevent um, leaching of calcium out of your cheese wheel while it's brining. Now this will just need to be set aside in a safe place where it's not going to get knocked over. I usually put some type of little netting over it to keep any kind of bugs, flies, anything that could be in the air off of it. Um, you don't want to put this in your refrigerator at this point. It does need to brine at room temperature. This particular cheese is going to brine between two to three hours per pound of cheese. And I have five pounds of cheese here, so this will brine for about 10 to 15 hours. Halfway through that brining process, you'll want to flip the cheese and salt the other side to complete your salting process. Now, every recipe for cheese will have different um, instructions on how long to brine it, but for a general rule of thumbs, uh, two to three hours per pound of cheese is pretty typical, unless you're dealing with a really hard, dense cheese that takes longer to brine but just follow your recipe on the brining. But now we've demonstrated how to do a brine and it should be pretty straightforward and easy for you in the future. Okay, so our next form of salting cheese is just dry salting. So I have four little wheels of Munster cheese that I made yesterday, and these are ready to be salted um, and begin the aging process. Now. The dry salting is usually done over a one to three day period. So for that, you're just going to want to make sure you entirely coat all exposed areas of your cheese to your salt. Now this recipe called for 1.75% salt based on the weight of your cheese. So I've already weighed this cheese and the calculation came out to 1.35% ounces of salt. Now when I do a dry salt on cheese, this is the time where it's extremely important to use a flaky cheese salt or a kosher salt like this 
that has a real fluffy texture as opposed to regular coarse sea salt, which is a big chunk, a crystal chunk. You could use something like a canning or pickling salt and that would be appropriate, um, but it's a much finer grind on the salt and it will soak in very quickly and almost harden the outside of your cheese where the additional salt doesn't slowly um, almost brine into the cheese. So for dry salting cheese, I highly recommend using a flaky cheese salt. You do wanna make sure your hands are very clean anytime you're handling your cheese so that you don't contaminate it inadvertently. I'm just gonna start sprinkling the salt onto the top of the cheese. Now this will draw out moisture from the cheese. So it essentially makes its own little concentrated brine on the outside of the cheese and slowly soaks in to the core of the cheese. Now what I have this cheese in for the dry salting process is another one of these little bucket trays. Um, and I've placed some cheese racks in the bottom of that to keep it up off the flat surface of the bottom so that there's air movement under there. And as this pulls off liquid from the cheese, it won't be sitting in a bunch of whey, risking it molding. This is a Munster cheese, so we do have um, some other special molds and bacteria in here that are going to give this a nice reddish orange coating on the outside as it ages. So all of the cheese has been salted on all of the surfaces at this point and I'm just going to drop these back in here we still have this remaining salt we'll put just a little bit on the top of each of them and we'll come back in probably about 12 hours and do a second coating of our salt and then at 24 hours, another coating of our salt, and that will probably be um, most of our salt added on. You can stretch the salting process out over about three days, um, but anywhere from one to three days of slowly adding your salt to your cheese. So as I had mentioned before, the salting process in cheese making is not only about flavor, it's about preservation. So each of these cheeses here, based on their particular recipe, they go a certain length of time with the good bacteria in them creating lactic acid and changing the structure of the curd and creating that distinct flavor that you want for that particular cheese. As soon as you start salting them, those good bacteria will be inhibited and will no longer make that acid that creates flavor in your cheese. The goal is to reach peak flavor in your recipe and then apply the salt at that point um, so that you stop the ongoing production of acid which would ultimately ruin your cheese. Additionally, a lot of molds, a lot of yeast, and bad bacteria are inhibited by the amount of salt that is used in cheese as well. So it preserves, but it also um, enables you to develop distinct characteristics in specific types of cheeses. So moving forward, enjoy your cheese making, and now you know the different methods for salting your cheese.